Hi, this is uh, Shabir Musa from the Wonka International Classification Committee. Uh, this is a video on ICPC basics. Um, the question currently is uh, how do you collect information? Is it um, that you collect any information at all? And if you are, what are you likely to be collecting? Usually it's ICD-10. And the big difficulty is that usually there's big lists of these and Often what we do is try to get cheat lists. And these cheat lists are a problem because we do different kinds of cheat lists. We are not necessarily consistent in the way we collect information. And also it's really only collecting disease information. Well, ICPC is the International Classification of Primary Care and a classification is about getting a unique code for a particular entity. And one of the things that we need to do is to be able to say, how do we classify best for primary care? In primary care, our consultation is the encounter. It's the way we actually manage in primary care. And we need to understand what are the elements of that consultation, that encounter we have with the patient. While in the, in the consultation, we have a reason for encounter. Often patients come in, they say they have a particular complaint and that's quite important in us managing good primary care and managing family medicine. The second thing is that we have a process by which we um, do things, uh, manage a particular consultation. And lastly, we come up with a diagnosis and may just make decisions on how we go further with that patient's problem. Um, Often it isn't very resolved, very easily resolved. ICPC has a particular structure. Um, it's called biaxial alphanumeric coding. So the first axis in the biaxis, the two axes, is the alpha where you have chapters. There are 17 body systems and problem chapters in the ICPC. And they label B, G, etc. Uh, alphabets that we will we'll talk more about just now. The second axis is the consultation, the components of the consultation. And these have the numeric codes, which are having specific um, um, disease entities or complaints to them. Let's go into this. So basically in the first um, axis, you've got the chapters. That's A for general, Z for social problems, and all in between for different body parts or body systems. Uh, D for digestive, K for circulatory, N for neurological, etc. And then you've got um, axis 2, which is the components part, which has seven to them, but if you look at them, they're basically um, three sets of them. The one is uh, symptoms and complaints, where you have now um, codes anywhere from 0, 1 to 29 that are distinct codes um, that relate to a symptom by uh, particular chapters and they differ and then you've got uh, codes uh, the, the component 7 which are your diagnosis and diseases which run from 70 to 79 again unique codes for different entities um, in the diagnosis uh, field in the diagnosis component and the process codes run from 2 to 6 or 30 to 69 and they are sort of sub components to them um, that you might look at then you've got ICPC um, code that um, same thing we're talking about is the alphanumeric code 1A 2N. The chapter is denoted by the A, the alpha, um, and usually one alpha. Um, the component is represented by the two digits, which is the two numbers that give you, that are sort of implicit in that they are in different ranges. Um, so you might have a particular problem, like uh, uh, a particular complaint, like heartburn, that's then coded saying, well, it comes from digestive to system. So D is the first alpha, the alpha is D, and then the component one, you look at the way it is in the 0 to 0 0.1 to uh, 0 0.1 to uh, 29, and it's there at uh, 0 0.3. So the code for heartburn is D03. That's the one alpha, two numbers, two numeric. Then there might be an example of a pneumonia. Again, you look at it's a part of the chapter R, respiratory, and then it is a disease. So you look at component seven, and there you'll find it under 81. So the code for pneumonia would be R81, and that's how you code. So if you're looking at their codes that basically 
uh, cover all body parts and systems and then um, allow you to be able to find a unique code for it. So if you look at the two pager, um, you've got process codes in gray, which are from 0, uh, 0, 030 or 30 to 69. And these would be, um, you'd put in um, a B if there is something that you are related, the process relates to the blood system, or if it were the ear that you're doing an examination, you'd use an H in front of the process code. But otherwise, if you're going into any of these systems and looking for a, a symptom, you'd look at the green, and that would provide you all the symptoms complaints. And if you're looking at all the other colors, those are the disease uh, entities that you find for anywhere from 70 to 99. So this is how the two pages composed and allows you to look at the different body parts, body systems as, um, as chapters go and implicit within the body chapters uh, by virtue of the numbers and the range of numbers is the components. So um, these are the three elements but the components are slightly hidden in terms of a range and that's the reasons for encounter or the complaints which are anywhere from 01 to 29 and the process codes which are in uh, the sort of a general section right at the beginning anywhere from 30 to 69 and then the disease codes or diagnostic codes which are anywhere from 70 to 99 and are, uh, are designated by the different colors other than green so this allows you to be able to gather information using ICPC coding with just a two-pager. But ICPC is more than just diagnosis, as you said, and that's why it provides us very useful information by including reasons for encounter and process. The key in terms of um, getting to say, well, what does get included in the ICPC? Uh, the focus is not on just an entity as being important to specialists, but what we see is important is that it is common in primary care. So anything that we find, any complaint or uh, disease or di diagnostic, uh, diagnostic label that we have should be common in the sense of having more than one per 1,000 patients per year. So um, those are the kinds of things that we need to decide. So I, family physicians across the world need to be part of this decision as well, what is common, and then to be able to include that in the ICPC uh, as we go forward. Uh, there's also a ragbag rubric at the end of each component because inevitably we have other, other disease labels or diagnostic uh, symptom labels that we need to, to, to code for, and these are the ragbags. So every, at the end of um, each um, symptom set, there is a 29. So for example, S29 would be any other skin complaint or skin symptom. Uh, again, at, at the end of the diagnostic is 99. So it would be any other disease label uh, in, in, in this one, K99 would be anything cardiovascular. So at each, in each of these chapters, you'll find a 99 or a 29 that would allow you to uh, er, you know, include anything potentially. So ICPC2 is very useful as an ordering principle with ICD-10 where you can link from, um, from ICPC to ICD-10 and then open up the ICD-10 hierarchically to be able to pick up what exact condition this is that might not be included um, in our common set in ICPC. The reason for encounter is an important element to try and code for because in primary care ICPC uh, that we code for um, reason for encounter is often more the sort of way we manage than necessarily getting a diagnosis and it's important that we code for the patient statement may be clarified by the family physician but it's the patient statement not what the family physician picks up by way of history taking and in this case, you might use any ICPC code because a patient may come in saying, I have a symptom and, uh, or he may say, I want something done and which is a process code. Or they may say, I have uh, diabetes as a diagnostic label. And then you can say that's a reason for encounter. And so codes may come from anywhere in the ICPC for reasons for encounter. 
The second uh, element that we code for is problems, and this is usually the diagnosis, but it's the family physician's assessment of the patient's problem, and this can be any set, including general problems as well as um, any uh, social problems. And it's important that this can be a symptom set because we may not be having a clear diagnosis and in which case the certainty we have is that it's just a symptom. Or you might get to the component seven where you actually have a disease. You said, I, I do know what the problem is and you then have a diagnostic label. Um, components two and six are, are processes. So they cannot be used for coding a problem because you know when you assess that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, coding should occur at the highest level of the family physician's diagnostic certainty. So if there are lots of little problems, those don't become problems once you have a diagnosis. That diagnosis covers all the related symptoms uh, that should be a problem. And uh, unless it's something that's exceptional outside of the diagnosis, that you'd say, I still want to retain that as a problem label. Uh, otherwise, your diagnosis covers all of the related symptoms. And rubrics, you know, and codes, which is the same word for rubrics, uh, in component one and seven often have inclusion and exclusion criteria. And as you get more familiar with ICPC, you'll become more clearer by having a book or a, um, the details of the ICPC so that you know what's included and what's excluded. Um, so please check when, as you proceed. The third element is that of process of care, and that's components three, four, five, and six. Um, which I'm lumping here for ease uh, as just the process of care component. And um, often you may add a fourth and a fifth digit to the three, to the three digits um, so that you might be able to have more specificity. Um, and you can use the ICP process PC book um, to get more specific codes as the set in the two pager tends to be a little narrow. The limitations uh, of ICPC are that it cannot classify certain things. For example, physical examinations not really being detailed in the ICPC, except to say it's partial or complete. Uh, drugs are not included in the ICPC. It's not uh, yet formally adapted for it, but uh, it might be. And uh, process of care example is very broad, non-specific at the moment, um, and needs to be elaborated as, uh, as we said. Um, in fact, primary care is more complicated than us simply saying there are these three elements in a consultation or encounter. As we've said, that there's a reason for encounter, a process, and then a diagnostic label. There's also the question of ongoing care, continuative care, and there's a concept called episode of care, which allows us to look at ongoing care. Well, an episode of care is um, something that can be dealt with in one encounter. So if you're having a, a respiratory tract infection and you manage that in one sitting or consultation, that's one encounter, one episode of care. But you can also get an episode of care like a patient with diabetes who we are managing over several encounters. You know, come back next week, come back next month, and you are managing that as one encounter episode of care, but in many encounters. Um, so it's one encounter can deal with many more than one episode of care um, and in as we've said in these instances um, the upper respiratory tract infection and diabetes are actually two sub encounters in that one encounter an example of this our complexity of care being able to unfold and be better examined if we can code for it is a patient coming in saying i have a reason for encounter i'm feeling tired you then decide there's a problem, it's just tiredness. You then say, let me send you off to get an HB done. And that's the process of care. A patient comes back, says, doc, I'm coming here because I want to get my test result. You then uh, say, you know, let's look at the result. And you see, ah, oh, there's iron deficiency anemia. You then set about saying, well, let's do the next step, which is a colonoscopy, and you get that done. And then the third page time the patient comes being, comes in, he says, what's the test result, doctor? And you say, ah, oh, we see that you've got a cancer of the colon. And then you set in motion a process of referral and advice. So that helps you if you're collecting data per encounter and you see this episode of care that are linked, you can in fact be able to unpack a lot of complexity to different reasons for encounter and problem sets um, and unpack the complexity in primary care. 
Well, let's summarize ICPC. It's a biaxial classification which has one axis for body chapters and another for the consultation components. Um, so alpha is for the chapter and numeric is for the component which allows you to have a code, three uh, digit code that tells you this is asthma, it's unique. Um, and this way you can basically pick up unique codes in re for reasons encounter, um, problem diagnosis and process of care. So let's do a, uh, some scenarios and you can do as many as you can or just shift forward. Um, we're going to go through them. You can use the option to stop, to uh, examine and then also to fill in for yourself what those uh, answers are, the codes are, and then to see what the answers are later. Okay, let's go. Well, what's the kind of uh, ideas in the uh, scenario one? Basically, Ms. Whoopi has uh, two reasons for encounter, a dizziness and a headache. Um, and then you sit and say, well, what are the problems? It's hypertension that seems to be well controlled. There's some marital problems. She's lost her job and her husband's also unemployed. Uh, you then did some processes where you did a urotenic urine examination and an ECG examination, and then you prescribed various drugs, um, and then you referred the person to a social worker. The reasons for encounter would be N01 and N17. The problems would be K86, Z12, and Z06. Your management process would be K31, K35, K42, N45, K50, and Z68. And that basically takes all the different problems and uh, processes and you've coded for them. Well, in scenario two, what are the reasons for encounter? He complains, Mr. Falala complains of severe abdominal cramps. The problems that you see on assessment are this person feels that he's been bewitched, the extended family quarrels, there's poor erections, his BMI was over 32, um, and his blood pressure was 180, 105 on um, one exam, on a second exam, on a second check, but first time. And he also has athlete's foot, and uh, Dr. Yagava thinks he also has uh, food poisoning. In terms of process, he's dispensed some medicines, and he's also advised him to do exercise and diet. Um, in terms of coding, the choice is, is basically D01 as the reason for encounter. The problems are D73, K85, T82, Y08, S73, Z04. And his processes that he's undertaken is D31, T45, D45, S50, D50. So in scenario three, the reason for encounter for Mrs. Desai is that she wanted family planning and she also is complaining of burning urine and blood in her urine. The problems that you pick up is that she had asthma, um, she's pregnant, she now has a urine infection and she seems quite distraught about this. What processes you've undertaken is did an ultrasound, you've um, suggested that she um, she discuss it with her husband, you've done a referral letter to the clinic and dispensed the amoxicillin. You've also done a urine pregnancy test. So the reasons for encounter would be W11, 0, U01, U05. Problems would be U71, W79, W002 and the management process is W31, W41, W45, W50, W67 and also urine test uh, for pregnancy that we've not encoded for. Scenario 4.
So in scenario four, the reasons for encounter is he wanted to do a routine medical examination, but he also had a growth on his leg. And um, the problems that were picked up that he had a lip lipoma, he had evidence of TB, and he was also HIV positive. Um, the processes, and you also found out that he's very stressed about his employer finding out and also he, it, you know, his HIV diagnosis getting to his social workers. Um, Dr. Lin also assured him. So his uh, x-ray was done, uh, he had an HIV test done, he had counseling done, he had a TB notification form done and he was also referred um, to a pulmonologist and also was Dr. Lin assured him. So the codes basically for reason for encounter is A62, S04, problems that he picked up, assessed were A30, R31, S78, A70, B90, Z04, Z05. And the management processes that were undertaken were S31, B33, A41, B58, A62, A67. There are obviously limitations to ICPC-2, which is that, you know, it's not completely comprehensive. Uh, there are some developing world issues that are missed, not very well uh, elaborated on, like HIV. There's outbreaks like public health and public health issues like Zika. And um, its question is, how suitable is this for EMRs? Um, we also um, need to add more rubrics, as we've said. There are also other components or other things that we need to think about how do we include in ICPC going forward, like risks and personal factors. So ICPC-3 is coming up as a way to address these limitations in ICPC-2. And the change from ICPC-2 to ICPC-3 is moving from 1A, 2N, or 1alpha, one, 2-numeric, one to a 2alpha, two 2-numeric. Two so that the component now is not uh, just implicit in the range of numbers uh, in the 2N, but in fact will be a sp explicitly coded second alpha. So for example, F04 uh, as visual floaters will now become SFS04 as a symptom, explicitly a symptom, and L83 as next syndrome will now become LD83 as a diagnosis. And numbers, of course, may change because now diagnosis can start all the way from 0, uh, zero 1 uh, instead of 7, 0. And so you have much more space that uh, happens to be available and um, the numbering is obviously going to change. So symptoms are 0, 1 to 29 currently. Uh, implicit within the numbering uh, will now be able to go from 0, 1 to 99. Diagnosis, which was previously from 7, 0 to 99, and now go from 0, 01 to 99 and it also allows us to come in with new components and its benefit is going to be that it's got much more flexibility and there's more space to be able to make it a more robust global um, global coding system classification system so that's uh, Wonka international classification giving you a little bit of a basic on using ICPC3 uh, we hope you found that useful. If you need any further information, go to the PH3C website, uh, which is the website of the Wonka International Classification Committee, a working party of Wonka, which is the World Organization of Family Doctors. Thank you.